you think you'll be moving into base housing? No, I think I'll be getting an apartment in the community. Welcome to class. What are you doing up there, soldier? Get down. Okay, let's get started. Now that we know how to evaluate and help a casualty who is having difficulty breathing or has stopped breathing, we will move on to the next step and learn to control bleeding. If you cannot stop a casualty from bleeding, the casualty may just as well be dead. Loss of blood is just as deadly as not being able to breathe. People, whether they are civilian or military, who are bleeding will usually be in no condition to properly stop their own bleeding. This is where you come in. You will have to be able to control the bleeding of an injured person. If at all possible, expose the wound first by pushing or cutting away loose clothing. This will enable you to view the extent of the injury. Clothing or anything else stuck to the wound should be left alone to avoid aggravating the injury further. Do not attempt to clean the wound on the battlefield. A dressing is a pad made of soft material that is applied directly over a wound. When it is necessary to apply a field dressing to a bleeding extremity in a combat situation, you want to use the casualty's dressing for his own wound. Do not use your own dressing. Place the dressing directly over the wound. Grasp olive drab tails of the dressing with two hands and pull the dressing open. It's important to remember to place the white side down. With one hand, hold the dressing in place. Use the other hand to wrap one of the tails around the injury. Note, if the casualty is able, you may ask him to hold the dressing in place while you wrap the tails. Wrap the other tail in the opposite direction until the remainder of dressing is covered and secured to the body. Tie the tails into a non-slip knot over the outer edge of the dressing. The field dressing knot is never tied over the wound. The dressing should be tied firmly enough to secure the dressing, but loosely enough to insert two fingers between the knot and the dressing. If the wound is actively bleeding, apply direct manual pressure over the dressing for 5 to 10 minutes to help control the bleeding. The casualty can be asked to do this himself if he is conscious and can follow instructions. If the direct pressure does not stop the bleeding, apply direct pressure to the injury itself. Elevate the injured extremity above the level of the heart to lessen the bleeding. If conditions do not permit you or the casualty to hold the limb personally, a blanket, shelter half, poncho, log, or any other available material can be used to elevate the injury. If a fracture is suspected and it is not splinted, do not elevate the injured part. If the bleeding continues, it may be necessary to apply an improvised pressure dressing. A pressure dressing consists of these parts. 1. Any bulky material which can be folded several times, such as a rag or a piece of soldier's garment, and placed on top of the original dressing. 2. Strips of cloth torn from a garment, socks, or other material which is then wrapped around the padded material to secure it in place. Remember to keep the injured extremity elevated. Place the wad of padding directly over the wound and on top of the original dressing. 1. Place an improvised dressing over the wad of padding and wrap it tightly around the limb. 2. This time tie the ends in a non-slip knot directly over the wound to secure the extra padding. Check to make sure that the dressing is tight enough so that only the tip of one or two fingers can be inserted between the dressing and the knot. The pressure dressing should not have a tourniquet-like effect and it must be loosened if the skin beyond the injury becomes cool, blue, or numb. If bleeding still persists after direct pressure and elevation, it may become necessary to apply firm pressure to one of several pressure points on the victim's body. The point to use will be located on the affected limb between the wound and the heart. Use of a pressure point will cause a slowing of the flow of blood to the affected limb and help a clot to form. 
Once a pressure point is used, you should be prepared to hold pressure for at least 10 minutes. In our example of an arm injury, this is the correct pressure point on the brachial artery. If the bleeding stops, watch the casualty closely for life-threatening conditions and check other injuries if necessary. If all attempts to stop the bleeding have failed, you might have to apply a tourniquet. A tourniquet is a constricting band and it is placed around an arm or leg to stop severe bleeding. This band is improvised from a strip of cloth or handkerchief. If the bleeding continues or if the wound is a partial or complete amputation of the arm or leg, you will need to apply a tourniquet on the injured extremity. A soldier whose arm or leg has been completely amputated may not be bleeding when first discovered, but a tourniquet should be applied anyway. This absence of bleeding is due to the body's normal defenses. A contraction of blood vessels as a result of the amputation but after a period of time bleeding will start as the blood vessels relax. A tourniquet should only be used when all other measures have failed to control bleeding. Do not use wire or shoestrings for a tourniquet band as these narrow items may cut into the limb and cause more damage. A tourniquet is used only on arms or legs where there is danger of loss of casualties life or limb. Once a tourniquet has been applied, do not, I mean, do not adjust, loosen, or remove it for any reason. Procedures for putting on a tourniquet. First, prepare a tourniquet. Improvise bandage from handkerchief, strips of cloth, or other strong pliable material. Fold it into a band not less than two inches wide. Obtain a rigid, stick-like object. Second, apply the tourniquet. Place the tourniquet two to four inches above the wound and between the wound and the heart. If the wound is just below the elbow or below the knee, the tourniquet should be applied above and as close to the joint as possible. Please note, the tourniquet should not be placed on a joint or over the wound. When possible, place the tourniquet over the casualty sleeve or trouser leg to prevent further injury. Third, tie a half knot. A half knot is the same as the first part of tying a shoelace. Fourth, place the rigid object, a stick for example, on top of the half knot. Fifth, tie a full knot over the stick. Twist the stick until the tourniquet is tight around the limb and the bright red bleeding has stopped. In the case of a large wound or an amputation, dark oozing blood may continue for a short time. If possible, severed limbs or body parts should be saved and transported with, but out of sight of, the casualty. Secure the stick using the ends of the tourniquet band or another piece of cloth so that the stick does not unwind and the casualty is not injured further. Caution! Do not cover the tourniquet. Leave it in full view. Notice, if the extremity is missing, apply the tourniquet first to stop the bleeding, and then pad and bandage the stump using whatever improvised bandaging materials are available, such as shirts or strips of cloth. Make sure to mark the casualty's forehead with the letter T to indicate a tourniquet is in place with the time of application. After the casualty has been bandaged and marked, it is crucial to get medical help as soon as possible. Okay, that concludes the material on bleeding. Time for your test. When you have finished, come see me for your grade. Good job, soldier!